As always, please keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor. The content on this channel and on my website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I know I gave you guys an update on DJOC last week when they released their quarterly results, but there has been some news and I want to make sure that you guys all know about the webinar that's coming tomorrow. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick update on the on DGOC. And well, as I just mentioned, the first one is the DGOC webinar. It's going to be tomorrow, so on Tuesday at 1 p.m. GMT, which is the UK time. So for people from the Netherlands, it's going to be 2 p.m. And um, yeah, if you want to... If you want to watch this one, you have to register for the webinar. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the pinned comments so you don't have to email that company. But um, if you want to watch that, check out the link below. And uh, yeah, it will be good. And as I said before, I will make a video about it tomorrow evening to give you guys all the highlights and the takeaways. But um, yeah, I can imagine if you are a shareholder that you want to watch the full video to really get a grasp of uh, the CEO, CFO and all that. Secondly, did you see made a few announcements today and while they are not that noteworthy in and of itself I thought well if I make an update video I may as well mention it straight away and The first one is the vesting of restricted stock units. So they have released 150,000 of the stock units that were Available from their equity incentive plan. So what does that mean? Um, the senior members of DGC operations management team when they reach their targets, they get rewarded by receiving shares, which obviously is their incentive to perform very well. So 150,000 of these shares have been released to them, meaning that they have reached their goal. So on one hand, it is less positive because we have a little bit of a share dilution, not really noteworthy though. And on the other hand, it means that whatever their targets were, they have managed to succeed in that. So the outstanding share, total shares of um, DGC is this amount, so it's 150,000 more than it was before. Secondly, the announcement made today is that the Chief Operating Officer, Brad Gray, uh, acquired 15,000 ordinary shares, um, 109.80 pence each. So what does this mean? He just acquired shares, they still think that this company is undervalued or at least trading at fair value and they expect the price to go up. So if the chief operating officer who is basically on the ground managing the operations of the business, buying shares, well, it's obviously a good sign. Something else that's likable, I guess, is his amount of shares. It's 2.3 million, over 2.3 million. So he has a pretty decent amount invested in this company. And um, he's not only receiving them as incentive, as we have just seen in the previous announcement, but he's also acquiring them by simply paying for them. So this is pretty good as well. Thirdly, we had a CEO interview. Uh, I think it was released uh, the same day of the quarterly, uh, quarterly results when they were released. It's an eight minute video. Um, I think it was highly lucrative, even though some of it is quite repetitive, but it's worth uh, listening to or watching it. And I'll leave a link in the link in the pinned comment as well, so you guys can watch that if you want. But there was something particular of in the CEO interview that I want to mention to you, and that is something the CEO said. And he said, "I'd be highly disappointed if we didn't have something going in the next few months." And he replied with this answer when he was asked about acquisitions. And why do I like this? Because he mentioned I obviously can't say anything about it, which is fair because if there haven't been any deals closed, then yeah, you cannot say anything until there has been a release in the news, um, in their news release, basically. Basically where we get all the information. However, the fact that he mentioned this actually means that they have something that they're looking into, maybe even several. And um, he mentioned before that, um, yeah, they have in the interview as well, I believe, about how much liquidity is available in the equity market and so on. And yeah, the fact that he's looking into this is actually very interesting. And that gets me to the last part, and that's having a look at what kind of growth we can expect from the possible acquisition that the CEO hinted at. 
So thinking about the potential acquisition, we have to think about, okay, how much liquidity is available. So at the end of the third quarter, which is uh, not the end of September, they had $221 million of liquidity. If, I list, if you listen to the interview that I just mentioned uh, that I'll link to in the pinned comment, he mentioned that he has about $250 million available liquidity. Um, the difference obviously is about uh, one month of paid off uh, debt and all that and acquired uh, money through sales. So they say he mentioned that he had about 250, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use this number to calculate the potential growth that we can expect. And it's going to be a very conservative growth. And something to keep in mind as well is that they can acquire something bigger than this amount, both through their strategic agreement with Oak Tree Capital, but also because they can still tap into equity from other people and look for other investors to acquire certain assets. But to illustrate the potential increase we can expect from a shareholder perspective, I'm only going to use the liquidity that is available, which is the amount right here. And the reason for that is, well, if they have, if they use equity, our shares will be diluted. So we only want to calculate the increase of the liquidity that is available. So what did I do for this? I looked at the most recent acquisitions, which is the carbon acquisition and the EQT acquisition. And I mentioned that gross price that they paid for the amount of uh, barrels of oil equivalent per day it's going to produce. So looking at this, it's going to be a $235 million acquisition, which is about the same as what they have available in liquidity, especially when you take into account that the month of October has already passed as well. Uh, that would give them 18.1K in barrels of oil equivalent per day production. However, the liquidity is not 235, it's 221. So what I did, I calculated how much that would be, uh, how much production that would be. And it was a little bit over 70,000, like 20, 20 barrels of oil equivalent above it, but I just rounded it up a little bit below to be on the safe side and just to make a nice round number. And taking into account their current production, including the assets that I mentioned here, so their entire producing assets is gonna be 107,000 barrel of oil equivalents per day. So adding 17,000 to that is gonna be an increase of about 16%. However, obviously they use liquidity for that. So uh, whatever they gain from this, obviously cost some money because they have to pay the interest that they uh, for the loan that they take out. And what we can say is that the effective increase on business is gonna be 10%. Few caveats here, because obviously this is not uh, rocket science. It doesn't mean this is based on the hedged price, I guess, and the gas price is already higher. So um, it also doesn't mean that the 6% is gonna be effective of this entire production. So it's a bit of, I'm thinking the, the effective interest rate cost is going to be between six, I'd say three and 6% of this acquisition. But to be on the safe side, I'm just going to be very conservative in my assumption and keep in mind that we've already seen a 15% increase this year. So the fact that we would add 10% to it is already pretty, pretty decent, but that is something that we can expect for shareholders. Um, just to add to this, I'm just going to explain to you how conservative I was. I used the same valuation as recent acquisitions. So I looked at these numbers. One can question whether or not that is conservative or actually very, um, well, I guess not conservative. I forgot the opposite word for that just now. Sorry about that. Um, because obviously the gas price has been increasing lately. So it could be that they have to pay a little bit of a premium for that. Even if that's the case, which I don't think so, because uh, it could be a little bit higher, but the CEO mentioned before that the uh, industry is still distressed. So people are looking to liquidate their assets and they need buyers. So I'm, don't thinking, I'm not thinking the price they will pay is gonna be that much higher. But um, something else I didn't take into account is the cost efficiencies that they could obtain by like, combining businesses. So let's say from their midstream assets and all that, or just having less workforce for the same amount of production. I also didn't take into account any increase in gas price. Obviously, I'm just looking at barrels of oil equivalent, just at production. A higher gas price obviously will offset this increase, but the entire business will increase. So it will be good in general if there's a higher gas price. 
I mentioned before that I didn't take into account any share dilution because, well, if there's any share dilution, we will not get any gains from that because, yeah, we will have share dilution to offset that. And lastly, I didn't take into account the working interest from Oak, or from Oak Tree Capital, which is about 5%, um, I guess effectively 2.5%. Um, so we can expect a little bit of an increase for shareholders. But yeah, if we if we just think about 10%, I think that's already very decent. That means that they will have a 25% growth in the past 12 months. And then I'm just taking the full year, even though the last acquisition was in May. So 10% added to 15% is already pretty steep, pretty big, and it's higher than any of the calculations I made before and my assumptions. But um, yeah, it looks very conservative and obviously very good. And um, yeah, for those dividends investors out there, yes, I do expect the dividends to increase by 10% then as well. Um, if we look at the past, recent past, we're gonna say, okay, it's gonna be 7% dividend increase if they acquire a new asset of this magnitude, of course um that's the caveat but um yeah that's going to be looking very good and um yeah right now we have a dividend yield of 12 percent, so a seven percent increase on that or 10 percent is going to make it about 13 um which also means that we can expect a share price appreciation which we have seen in the past two days and i'm really wondering what tomorrow is going to bring from both the elections in the us and also from the webinar so that's going to be a very interesting day at least. And yeah, we really have to wonder what Wednesday is going to bring. Um, I'm getting ready for a uh, rocky few weeks at least. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to sell anything because sure, it's all guessing and I'm not focused on the short term. I'm a long term investor. And I think with DGOC, I can sit it out for the long term. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and um yeah if you're gonna watch the webinar please let me down uh, let me know down in the comments below as well and yeah i will literally see you guys tomorrow as well after i give you an update on the webinar thank you guys for watching and see you guys tomorrow